a Pulitzer Prize winning report on the financial crisis by the National Public Radio in the U.S. drew the source of the crisis back to something they referred to as the global pool of money. That is, all the money that people around the world are saving and looking to invest, technically known as the fixed income securities. Between the year 2000 and 2006, these global savings grew dramatically, from about $36 trillion in 2000 to $70 trillion in 2006. The issue was that despite the fact that the global pool of money doubled in nearly six years, the number of safe investment options did not. In the hunt for new investments, residential mortgages in the U.S. became a particular favorite of the global investment industry. While the federal interest rate was hovering around 1%, homeowners were paying 5 to 9%. The problem for the investors would be getting involved with the individual homeowners, which would be too much work for their return. What ended up happening is they devised a system in which smaller banks sold the mortgages to Wall Street banks, which then bundled the mortgages into packages, and the shares of the monthly income from the packages were sold to investors. These were called mortgage-backed securities. Issues started to arise when just about everyone who wanted a mortgage and would normally qualify for one already had one, but the investors still wanted more. This led the banks to loosen the standards on whom they would lend to. It eventually reached the point that, in some instances, all that was needed to qualify for a mortgage was a stated income and money in the bank. No proof of income or assets were needed. No one was really worried about the risk because no one was holding on to the mortgage for very long before selling it. Small banks were taking out loans from larger banks to buy mortgages and selling them to Wall Street banks. These banks were often highly leveraged, often 20 to 1, which means they were able to borrow up to 20 times the cash that they actually had. When the bubble burst, housing prices began to plummet, and nobody wanted to buy these mortgages anymore. The whole system came crashing down, which affected not only Wall Street, but also the people who had taken out the mortgages and the entire global economic system.